everybody. Cole here. Uh, welcome to uh, episode 11 of our Zoom into Adventure series. Today we have Andits Kalapasoro from the Okeanos Aggressor 1 and 2 joining us. It's going to tell us a little bit, a little bit about Cocos Island and their operation. So thanks for tuning in. Um, we, we are going to ask that everybody turn their screens off and uh, mute their microphones as it can be distracting to the presenter. And uh, if you want to ask any questions for Andits, um, you can ask me through the chat box. The chat comes directly to me. Uh, there's a little button down here on the bottom screen and it'll pop up the chat box and it'll come straight to me. We'll try to ask uh, all the appropriate questions we can. And uh, let me go ahead and give you a little background on Andites and we'll get started here, okay? All right, so Andites is a PADI instructor and has worked with the Okeanos Aggressor 1 and 2 since 2003. Originally from Basque County, I'm sorry, originally from Basque Country, Spain, Andites has always lived near the ocean. After finishing her degree from Deusto University, she started traveling the world and discovered diving. In 1997, she completed her open water dive course in the Whitsunday Islands, Australia. Falling in love with the sport, she then focused her travels around diving and completed her advanced water, dive, advanced water diver certification in Cairns, followed by her rescue diver certification in New Caledonia. She then started her dive master course in Vanuatu, after returning to Europe, she worked on a liveaboard for the Red Sea for five years. Luckily, at a dive show in Madrid, she met the owner of the Okeanos Aggressor, who hired her as a cruise director, and she fell in love with the famed Cocos Islands, where she has worked and lived for the last 17 years. So, Andits, how are you today? Hola, how are you? We're so excited to have you. So, you said there's been a bad storm going on there now. Is everybody staying okay. here? Last night was, uh, was terrible. I'm happy we have uh, good internet today because it was really bad. Wow. Well, all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and turn it over to you. Cocos is always one of our big bucket list uh, itineraries. So we're excited to hear your presentation. Sure. Let's go for it. All righty. Tell us a little bit about yourself there first. I'm sorry. Well, what you, what you said is pretty, pretty um, accurate. I, I am originally from a little uh, town. It's called uh, Getxo. It's next to Bilbao. I am Basque. And I decided to start uh, traveling after I finished my university. And I went to Australia. And uh, the first uh, place that I visited, it was uh, after Sydney, it was Cairns. And uh, there was this big um, ad of learn how to scuba dive on the wet Sundays. So I decided to join. Um, I did my open water there and immediately I wanted to continue doing uh, all the courses. Since I was um, traveling, you know, backpacking, uh, working, which is like uh, a travel work visa that the Europeans get for Australia and vice versa. So I ended up traveling also for, well, through um, uh, Vanuatu and Nouvelle Caledonie. And since diving there is also excellent, I continued my dive education. Since I became a dive master and then I started working on a liveaboard in Egypt. Um, I did both uh, north and south. And between my, my work, which was, uh, like uh, working like an instructor. My holidays also were, you know, about diving different places. So I went to uh, Asia and um, I do very, very many places like Galapagos also, um, uh, Bahamas, Belize, uh, Cayman. So it was really my, my passion. And after I finished my time in Egypt, I met uh, my boss, luckily, Jorge. And then uh, he hired me to work uh, on Okeanos 1, which was our first boat here. Um, so I was working on the boat for almost three years as a cruise director. And then, um, well, I am managing the office and the bookings and well, more dry job, but still diving involved. And I'm really happy doing it, actually. I love it. Good. We know you're quite the surfer too, aren't you? Yes, I am a water water lady. I, I surf and and I I also like the the open water uh, swimming. I usually do two or three per year, 
like long distance long distance i try to five kilometers something like that wow nice yeah i really i really really enjoy it sounds good all right were you ready to do your presentation yes all right go ahead and share your screen for us okay let's see Are you? Yes, we can see it. You can go ahead and go into uh, view slideshows. Okay, let me see. Screen. Okay. Perfect. Okay, well, so um, Cocos Island um, is also called, as you probably have all heard, the island of sharks. Um, it's we have so many sharks and all kinds of. Uh, I will show you some pictures later. But actually, what you see on that background is the, what you are going to see when you come and visit us on board. This is like the typical picture of cocos. I don't know why is this okay. So, just to explain you where we are, it's we are three hundred and. 32, sorry, 532 kilometers, around 300 miles uh, southwest from Punta Arenas, which is a very little uh, fisherman village on the Pacific coast. You know, Costa Rica has Pacific and uh, Caribbean side, so we are on the Pacific side. It only takes about one and a half hours uh, to go from our hotels to uh, San Jose. And the scenery is also quite nice, so it's a um, it's pretty fast transfer. Um, the island, it's a volcanic uh, island, which is 24 uh, square kilometers, 7.6 6 kilometers long, and 4.4 uh, kilometers wide. It's not a very big one. Uh, we can go around it on the boat or on the zodiacs, uh, and we will for the week and it's absolutely wild and beautiful. This island, Cocos, uh, makes like a triangle that is called the Hammerhead Triangle because we are almost equidistant to Galapagos and Malpelo. So they reckon it's like a highway for hammerheads. So they go Cocos, Galapagos and Malpelo. Actually, these are the three places where the only three places in the world where you can see the school in hammerheads. Um, it, it was also declared by the UNESCO, the World Heritage uh, Center, on December 1997, which ha has helped a lot with conservation since illegal fishing has been banned and there is a 12 uh, mile protection around the island. Uh, before that year, we had some issues with illegal fishing but since then, uh, it's not happened. It's very well looked after by uh, rangers. Uh, the island, and I will show you some pictures now, it's, uh, it's, it's, lush, it's uh, full of uh, wild vegetation. And apart from diving, uh, there is some people that choose one day for uh, hiking. There is a beautiful waterfalls all around the island. And if you are into hiking and you want to do it, we can also book a day for you, uh, but my recommendation is that you do it during uh, the summertime. Okay. Okay, this is um, Costa Rica. Okay, so just so you are located on the map. Okay, and this is where Cocos Island is. Okay, we live from Punta Arenas, which is here, all the way to Cocos which is 300 miles. This is, since you know pictures speak louder than words, this is our main bay, it's called Chatham Bay, and that's where we moor when we arrive. You see crystal clear water, you know, all this green, beautiful vegetation, and these satellite islands, which is one of the dive sites we go to, but all the island is surrounded by them. This is Okeanos One, 
our first boat, and this is the bay where we usually moor. This is an aerial view of the islands. Here you see our two boats. This is Okeanos 2, this is Okeanos 1. This is the bay, Chatham. It's pretty calm. Like we moor here, it's like you are on land. The boat does not move. It's pretty, pretty calm. This is one of the satellite islands that we dive also. It's called Manuelita, and it's one of my favorite dives. It's beautiful. All this area here is a very shallow area. It's good for, you know, the, the, the third dive, full of sharks, very calm. And the outside is a bit deeper, uh, trip diving, and it's beautiful. This is some more satellite islands, okay, that we also dive during the week. This is just an example of the waterfalls I was talking about, how beautiful they are. To this one, we can disembark. Uh, this, this bay is called Wafer Bay. So we take you on the zodiac here and we can just enjoy a little walk and swim on that beautiful waterfall. Just another example of another one. And this I want to show you uh, because I'm talking of the two bays that we usually more to one is Bahia Chatham. Bahia means bay in Spanish and Bahia Wafer, okay? So those are the main two ones where we more. And this is Cerro means mountain, mountain Iglesias, because that's the highest, highest peak on uh, Cocos, which is 634 meters. That's a hike that uh, booked within advance, we can always uh, do. And just uh, as a curiosity, Cocos Island was discovered in 1526 by a Spanish sailor co called uh, Juan Cabezas. Um, Cocos Island has a very, very uh, treasure and pirate fun story about, especially about the Lima treasure, because uh, when the Spanish were uh, in America and they stole the they go from the Native Americans, in this case, Peruvians, uh, they were bringing it back to, to Spain. And in between, the English pirates uh, stole it from there and apparently is uh, buried in, in Cocos. Uh, it, is, uh, it is being like uh, published that it was there. And after that, there were more than 100 expeditions to find the treasure in Cocos Island till the Costa Rican government uh, bans the expeditions. Um, pirates like Pirate Morgan, Benito Bonito, Francis Drake, John Hawkins, Edward Davis, who were very famous uh, pirates at the time, were some of the ones that visited uh, Cocos Islands and probably left some more treasures also. Um, Cocos, as a curiosity also, that doesn't have anything to do with diving, but it's a part of it, and I think it's uh, pretty much interesting, it was a jail uh, between 1879 and 1881 uh, during the, the presidency of uh, pres Costa Rican president Tomás Guardia. And um, believe it or not, there was also a German uh, family that uh, stayed there with another 12 more families, 13 total, and with excuse of uh, looking after uh, the island since it was so far away from the continent. And they lived there from 1897 uh, till uh, 1902. Uh, and apparently they were also looking for the treasure that they never found. This is another curiosity. It's the first time that Cocos is shown on a, on a map. It's a really old map. And um, this is uh, one of the, of the dive sites I, I was talking to you about, which is a uh, Manolita and it's uh, one of our first dives and favorite dives of our uh, old crew and probably guest also. I'll, I want to show you some uh, uh, of the scenery of the island. For example, you know, one of these is a swim through that you can do from one side to the other side of the island. It is very rocky. Um, this is uh, from one of our walks. If we go up to Chatham Bay, uh, this is Manuelita Island, is the one I show you. And this is the bay where we can where we moor the boats. And this is our first boat, Oceanos uh, Uno, Oceanos uh, One. Oceanos Uno, it's uh, 150, 
and 10 uh, feet length, 24 beam and 11 depth. And the cruising speed is around 10 knots. It was built in, uh, in Italy, but it was totally remodeled in 2003 and then again in 2009. Okeanos has nine deluxe cabins and one quad cabin. Uh, takes um, 22 guests and usually nine crew. This is a picture also of our salon. So you have a look at it, it's, it's pretty neat, very new. And this is, oh sorry, and this is also uh, our dining room. It has one big table here and another smaller table there. So it's pretty big to hold all our guests. Uh, this is uh, an example of um, our quad cabin. And also this is an example of a deluxe cabin. Um, as explained, so we have two kinds of cabins, deluxe and quad. Um, from uh, cab cabin two is the main, uh, sorry, the quad cabin. And all of them are down till cabin eight. Then cabin nine, 10 and 11 are, are up. Uh, all the master plan is uh, on our uh, web page of aggressor.com, Cobos Island, so you can find it there. And of course, each uh, statement ha features a private bathroom and a shower, individual AC control, monitor from via player, and storage uh, for your luggage. We also have a very big uh, dry storage in case you need to, to pack, to store your big bags, and you only want to have like your personal items for the week. Um, this would be like the dive map of uh, Cocos, okay? You see, here Bahia Chatham, which is the bay I was showing you, or with more, and this is the other one, Bahia Wafer. These two are basically the ones where we more at. And when we go to the south, which is this area, okay, there is another bay here, it's called Bahia Iglesias, and we more there. Okay. If you see in front of Bahia Iglesias, there is another huge waterfall that we can also go to. So I'm sure you have heard the names of uh, most of the dives like Manuelita, Pajara, Vikinga, Dirty Rock, Punta Maria, Dos Amigos Grande, which is Dos Amigos Big, Dos Amigos Pequeña, Dos Amigos Small, then Lone Stone, Manta Corner, Sumerge Rock, or the famous Bajo Alción. For example, the picture that I have on my background, that's from Alción. That's pretty much the picture you will get when you dive um, Alcyon, Manuelita, or uh, Dirty Rock. The diving in Cocos, it's um, three dives per day for seven days. The depths usually go from 60 to 100 feet, and the times are 8, 11, and uh, 3 p.m., with always 15 minutes before for uh, the briefings. Usually the captain or the dive master will explain you uh, the dive plan the night before saying, well, we'll go to this place, this dive site or the other one. And whatever plan we're gonna do, if we're gonna go to a land tour, if we're gonna go to a waterfall, that's all, um, always explained during dinner. And uh, the dives and the plan, it's usually uh, planned according to the sea conditions. Also, um, most of the dives are done from uh, tenders or zodiacs or pangas, like they call them in, in Costa Rica. And except for the, the check dive, most of the dives are drift dives and done from tenders. So when we say that advanced diving is required, it's like uh, it would be very helpful if you have some experience in drift diving or tender diving, because it will help you a lot in, uh, in Cocos. We have also one dive master on each panda or each zodiac, apart from the zodiac driver, which will help you in and out every time. And uh, while we dive cocos, due to the depths, uh, we highly recommend uh, nitrous diving. If you're not nitrous certified, we can certify you on board while we do the crossing from Punta Arenas to Cocos Islands. Hey, Austin, uh, do you want to answer yeah. some quick questions? We got a lot of them coming in. Oh, okay. Uh, so what are the main differences between the two boats and what are their highlights? 
Uh, well, my favorite is Okeanos One because that's where I started. Uh, Okeanos One has one quad, quad, one quad cabin and the rest are deluxe. Okeanos Two, all of them are uh, deluxe. Okeanos Two is wider. Um, some people like more Okeanos 2, some people like more Okeanos 1. Uh, basically, the way we run them is the same. The tenders are the same. Uh, the, the food is uh, pretty much the same and the dive schedule also. It's just uh, some people, for example, in Okeanos 2, which I was going to explain now, uh, we have three types of cabin, not only two like in Okeanos 1. We have the suites, we have the master, and we have the deluxe. Okay, which are a bit, the, the suites are a bit higher. Okay. And I'll show you some pictures now. Okay. And then uh, how often are you guys seeing tiger sharks out there? Are they safe to dive with? Uh, well, tiger sharks, that's been, um, tiger sharks have been on the island for the past, I think, I would say 15 years before we didn't have uh, tiger sharks. When I started diving in uh, Cocos as a dive master, we didn't have uh, tiger sharks. We started seeing them like um, 15 days, uh, 15 years ago, something like that. Uh, we dive with them all the time. Um, there are a couple of dives where uh, Manolita outside and Pajara, where are more, where they have been seen more times. Uh, and yes, I mean, we dive with them all the time, like we do with hammerheads, with Galapagos sharks, with silk sharks. Um, Cocos is, is a place where you can expect to see everything from orcas to tiger sharks, to turtles, to seahorses. I mean, it's really, really the, vari the variety you're gonna get in Cocos is huge. Okay, great. And speaking of hammerheads, is it pretty much guaranteed year round that you'd see some there in Cocos? Yes, for sure. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. All right. Um, so understanding that there are highlights in each season, what is your advice for when you book a trip to Cocos for divers who prefer the season with best underwater visibility? I understand that rainy season brings out some big pelagics. Uh, what is the trade-off? Okay, that, that's a, I love that question because I think you should visit Cocos twice, not one time, okay? Cocos should be visited in the summer and in the winter. When I mean summer, it means from November or December till April or May, and then from May till November, okay? So you have the dry season and you have the wet season. On the dry season, the, the visibility underwater is like uh, Caribbean, okay? It's, it's Caribbean, you get 100 feet, 90 feet, okay? And you still get the sharks and the water is like really, really warm. Like it, you could always go with a shorty or three mil more than enough. Then uh, the hammerheads are, you will always see them, but they will go deeper, okay? Because they don't like such, so, uh, so much the, the hot water, but you will always see them. If you go on the rainy season, like, of course, you will get a lot more rain and the visibility is still excellent all year round. It will be as good, but you will start, still have a good 60 feet, okay? That's, I mean, that's normal in Cocos. And when it rains a lot, the funny thing in Cocos is that only like the first, the first half meter uh, stays like murky. As soon as you go down, it's crystal clear again. So, and the hammerheads are, are very, very shallow. Like you could see easily hammerheads on any check dive. Okay, great. Uh, how many tenders and does everyone go in at the same time or are they kind of staggered? Okay, another good thing we have in uh, Cocos is that the maximum divers per dive, it's 12, okay? So that means is your zodiac and the dive master, okay? So anywhere on the island you go is only gonna be your group and nothing else. You're not gonna meet any other divers or you're gonna see any other divers. The, the Zodiacs will leave with like five or 10 minutes. All right, sorry about that guys. Uh, looks like we got hacked. Um, immature stuff right there. So sorry about that. We're gonna try to figure out what happened there. On deets, let's continue the conversation though. So um, the question you were just had been asked were, uh, 
the two uh, skiffs. Can you tell us about how they, those operate? Yeah. There is a maximum of 11 uh, on each one and the dive master. And we do the briefings with like 10 minutes uh, difference between each other. And every skiff or panga goes to a different dive site. So this is another luxury thing of Cocos that you'll be diving only with your group of friends if you came with them or, or the people you just met on the boat. But you will see no other diver around. Okay, great. And uh, what's the crossing from the mainland like? People usually uh, think it's pretty bad, but it's surprisingly good most of the years. Like, I'm not gonna lie, and during the year, you might find two, two hard crossings, but like, I'm talking hard, uh, not, not like totally terrible, but hard. But most of the year, like, it will be nice and smooth, and you know, like, People enjoy the ride because we always have dolphins and tons of birds. And the minute we are also arrived to Cocos Island, the bays are so calm that you feel like you're not even on a boat. It's really, really like the water we can see behind you is really flat. Great, great. Okay. All right, well, let's go back to sharing your screen. You were on the menu page when we got interrupted and uh, let's proceed from there. All right. Can you see it? No. Okay, no worries. The share screen? I don't think you shared, shared screen yet. Oh, I did uh, share screen. It says you, you don't allow. You have to allow me to share. Okay, hold on, let's see. <laughs> okay, now try doing it. Okay, there we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, so there we go. Now, wait. And just for the record, I, I might ask you a few questions as they come along, just that come up in my head, okay? Sure, yeah, yeah, that's the point. I actually have this, these pictures uh, just so, because one thing is talk about diving and another thing is, you know, uh, have a look at things we see. So we have all kind of, uh, you know, like not only sharks, which we know for being, you know, the island of sharks, hammerheads, of course, whale shark, you know, but listen, like we see orcas also, uh, all these beautiful marble rays, smiley faces all day long. Um, we have also uh, silver tips, Galapagos sharks, uh, beautiful turtles, as you can see, well, frog fishes also, like, we don't have much of a, uh, like, small stuff or macro, but, for example, frog fishes, we see them almost every week. And the beautiful uh, bottlenose dolphins that they are always um, swimming um, along. And also, we have a lot of uh, manta rays. And this is usually uh, what you're gonna, like, that would be your, the, the picture you will you will take on your memories when you go back like that yeah. you see up all the all the hammerheads so crazy yeah it's it is beautiful and uh well i explained before okeanos one and this is um uh okeanos two uh we were talking about the differences but uh this one is is a bit uh wider like the beam is uh okeanos one is 24 this one is 27 the length is uh, 120, but it holds the same amount of passengers, 22. It has uh, 11 state rooms. And the difference is that on this one, we have three different type of cabins, the suite, the master, and the deluxe. Okeanos one had the deluxe and the quad cabin. And again, uh, each state room features private bathroom and shower, individual AC, monitor for media player, and storage, of course, for your luggage. If you are, traveling in Costa Rica and you need, uh, sometimes people bring the dive equipment and then some more clothes or anything they will use. After that, we have a pretty nice dry storage where you, we can store all your things or you can also leave them at the, at the dock. And here's a picture of, uh, this is one of our suites that we have two suites. This one has a queen size bed. The other one has a two uh, individual beds, so you can choose between them two. This is an example of a 
the uh, bathroom of uh, this suite. Then this is the, the master, yeah, which is also pretty comfortable. And this is an example of the, of the deluxe. They, uh, they've been totally renewed and they, they're very, very comfortable uh, cabins, all of them. And just to finish, um, the transfer are uh, done from San Jose. Uh, it's only one and a half hours from two of our host hotels. We chose two hotels that are next to the highway because uh, San Jose has such a bad traffic that um, we chose these hotels because they were they had an easy exit to the highway instead of being inside the city. So the traffic won't affect us uh, that much. Um, Okeanos 1 and Okeanos 2 always live during the high tide and it is on the aggressor page. Uh, know before you go, there is explained and you know, um, they charter by charter, you can, you can see your departure time. But anyway, you should arrive to Costa Rica the night before. Okay, so in case of any delay, you don't miss the, the charter. Do the tides affect any of the diving when you're at Cocos? No, not at all. Like it's only for the departure okay. um, because we are hidden inside a little bay. But while in Cocos, you don't see the difference at all. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, well, the cruising to the island, it will take around 30 hours, 32. And the, we just spoke about this. And it's contrary to most people's thoughts. The, sail, the sailing is it's just really pretty nice. Uh, so I recommend you grab like two or three of your favorite books or something you want to do. There is also uh, movies uh, on board. You can bring your, your own uh, videos. We also have sticks that you can take to your room and plug them on your, um, uh, on your TV. The USB and, sticks. Uh, right. Sorry? The USB sticks. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, well, also we explain the, the cabins and that, but we also have, of course, uh, sand decks. One is uh, partially covered and the other one is totally outside. So while uh, you, we navigate, you can choose, you know, where to go. If you want to be a bit of the sun or you want to be covered or maybe you want to go inside. There is also a, a barbecue area that we use uh, once we arrive on the island. And both of them are, are very, very comfortable uh, boats and you will arrive in Cocos in no time. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for uh, your time. I'm looking forward to having you on board. And like uh, we say in Costa Rica for everything, Pura Vida. Pura Vida. And thank you for being a good sport. I did want to read you uh, one email. Uh, let me pull it up here real quick. Um, so after we got interrupted, we did have one person that said, hey, I really enjoyed the presentations and sorry it was hacked. Please let the presenter know that even in the shortened format, she won me over and I've moved Cocos to the top of my bucket list. Probably 2021. Thank you again. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. It was, yeah. it was, uh... It was not a very nice interruption, really. I think, you know, we should focus on the positive and not in people like that. I agree. So we're going to try to figure out the, how to avoid that next time. Yes. Uh, let me think if I can ask you any other thing. So how often uh, do you guys see whale sharks down there? Uh, pretty often. Uh, and the, 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 the thing is that we can see them uh, on both seasons because uh, I know that in some other diving destinations, uh, is for example certain months per year that you see them in Cocos. No, it can be they can be seen all year round. Like you can see them in February, you can see them in June, you can see them in August. Um, whales, humpbacks, for example, is more like August September uh, till December, and and orcas they are a surprise. Also, now do you actually get in the water with the orcas? Well, we have seen them, but we don't jump uh like with them we have followed them and we have seen them just by by luck yeah. while we're diving but it's not like they're there and we jump no if and what, we see them, it's fine what is their what are, what are they like underwater their mannerisms like how do they how do they act underwater are they curious or they keep themselves or sorry who the orcas uh 
Yeah, I mean, they, they, they I've seen them uh, three times, I think, and it's like, like you go like oh my god but they just do their thing it's like you know most of the animals uh, yeah. they just you know crew they go around uh they just do their thing like it, it was never it was never escape ever yeah good okay now the island looks huge now when you got you, you mentioned the uh the, the land excursion to go hiking you, there, there's a couple land excursions right because i know there's like a waterfall fall, uh land excursion there is hundreds of waterfalls, hundreds. Wow. But yeah, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. But we usually choose two, which are uh, close from uh, shore. Because remember that Cocos Island is wild. There is no, it's, it's a national park, but because it's protected. But we don't have like paths to go here and there. So we, uh, cho we have chosen these two, which are not such a hard uh, walk. Okay. But you can get to to just to the uh, to the waterfall, jump in fresh water. Uh, it's it's absolutely beautiful, and you can do it between dives, so you don't you don't miss a dive because some people uh, want to go to the island, but at the same time they don't want to miss any of the dives to become right. an iron diver. Remember, we also do the iron diver. Yes, and it's been a very successful program actually. Okay, are there any are there any animals on the island that you need to be weary of? snakes or no there is no snakes on the islands not one nothing and uh, big cats only, or anything like that you know like the only um animals that are on the island uh, are because you remember the german families i don't know if they cut us there or before <laughs> there were uh, some germans living on the island looking for the treasure for uh, for a while yeah. so yeah. they they brought some animals but they are they are not originally from cocos so there is yeah. like deers and uh wild pigs but they were brought in yeah but okay. there is no spiders and there is no snakes nice okay oh, yeah, very nice <laughs> um let's see so uh you were talking about the two, the two boats so do they operate and you might have answered this already so sorry if i've asked it again but um the t they're both doing 10 night charters are they ever uh leaving on the same day or are they kind of staggered no yeah like for example, like one boat leaves on a Tuesday, and the other one will leave on the Monday. Like we we try not to be there at the same time, and I think also for the guests, it's better to be the less people possible on the islands. Um, okay. So you know, it's really really when you go there, you really feel like oh my god, like am I here? And there is actually maybe you see one boat, uh, and you always dive uh, with your group by yourself. You know there is not many places in the in the world where you can find you know this isolated uh, luxury. Yes, extremely secluded to the max. Extremely, yes. Wow. Okay. And uh, so where where are you planning on diving next once all this is over the COVID? Um, I don't know really. You know what? I I really need to to choose. Uh, I think. I was uh, listening to the presentation of Palau. Yeah. So I've yeah. never been to Palau. Uh, so I think Palau will be my, my next destination. Next new destination. Next new destination, yes. Yeah. I hope my, my kid is 12 so he can travel with me. There you go. OK, yeah. great. Well, Deeds, thanks, thanks again for being here. And I appreciate you being a good sport during all that, that, uh, that little mischief we had there in the middle. Yeah. Um, but other than that, uh, thanks, guys. You can check, uh, learn more out about uh, Cocos Island on our website. And, um, yeah, I guess we'll see you next time. Maybe, maybe we'll have an audience. Maybe not. We'll figure it out. We'll see. All right. Thanks, Andy. It's great seeing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.